So, um, how did you get started with your acting career? Hello? Uh, I left school and after my service I tried to work and the job was not coming. I, I wanted because I was an engineer and I had friends who were into movies making then. My movie was so popular then. The movie industry was not big, it was not. We had more like two or three movies shot before then. So I I went with him, Check. and that was it. The director liked me, he told me he's going to give me this trip to play. But I said I'd be nice, and the next time he will invite me back, and that's how I got started. Oh. Okay, and um, what was your me most memorable role you ever played? I played several nice um, memorable roles. Uh, I think the one where I played, the one I, that I played, uh, the uh, arm robber, Jericho, is one of the roles that has touched my life since today. Because it's a true life story, and I played the role so well that people start, if still people refer me to, I mean, represent me by that character. And then the father, the mommy, the, uh, the late arm robber's parents got in touch with me and got emotional with me over that and everywhere I travel around people were like, hey, there we go, there we go and I think it has made so much impact in my life. And I tell you one particular experience of that role because I was disappearing, I was in disappearing act on the wall. I was this child I ran into in the Benin sometime. I went for a show, I think I went for Felix Duke's wedding. Okay. And he told me that the new woman that wants to meet me. And I went to see the woman, and she was all like, please, you have to help my son, you have to save my son. From the bondage you put in, I was like, your son, I don't even know your son. So what about bondage? He said, I found some girls in school. So we just stand there by the wall, and he wants to disappear like he disappeared. There you go. And it's not happening, it's not happening. And the guy has stopped going to school, became a problem, and it became a huge problem. I had to take the boy out, I had to sit him down, play with him, cajole him and make him understand that what, what I did was just for the movie and I can't actually disappear. So the character the role was so well accepted by my fans that um, it made visible impact on individuals. Okay. And um, actually I did watch the movie that I actually watched that um, made me become a very big fan of yours was actually this guy. Can you remember the movie? Yeah, that was for uh, the movie that brought so much Kuka to Limelight. Yeah, yeah, that one. It was so amazing and like, it actually inspired me. So I was wondering, who inspires you? Well, I, I was inspired by, by the truth. I've always been someone that I believe in. I've always had a knack for perfection. I've always had you know, a chase for for right creativity. And when I watch people like Bruce Willis, people like Will Smith, in those days, you know, when he, had, when he was in, into the sitcom stuff, and lately when he, and later when he came into movie mainstream, I thought, wow, I can do this. And I, I respect that. Okay. And so, um, what advice are you gonna give to those who are aspiring to become actors and actresses? Yeah, it's always be themselves. It's always choose the role model from whatever they they want to, Nollywood or Hollywood, and don't carry uh, the role models character, hook, line, sinker, on stage, be yourself, tell the story by yourself, by your character, you are the character, that's why you're casted for it, 
if you have an accident, an accident the character is supposed to carry. If you have a work style, that's the work style the character is going to carry. Whatever that may be, the team selects you as the best for that character. You must represent your own. And then try very hard if you are young and not coming, not to uh, be jealous about people who are ahead of you because that's the trend in Nollywood. There's going to come with a whole lot of them because everybody is picking everybody. They are picking their properties, the people who started before them as a way to, maybe as a way to thinking if these ones are out, we can get better. Something like life is not by life is not by wishes. So just do your best and try and we'll sort it all out. Have a have thoughts all. Okay, and actually, um, some of your fans actually um sent me some questions on Facebook to ask you, and one of the questions were actually, um, are you single? I'm not single. I'm married. Okay. I'm actually asking such questions on Facebook when they see my marriage. They hear my wife all the time on the internet and all that. All right. I mean, what they read a lot on the internet and news about me and my marriage is not even one. I have married with three sons, three boys. Wow. Michael, Kelly, and Stephen. Congrats. Okay. And um, your fans also want to know um, if you're working on any movies right now and when it's going to be out. Yeah, I'm working on some new projects beyond just one movie right now. So hang on. I am here in the right now. I, I am here at Nollywood. And that's a very huge statement. Just with time before you understand what I mean. Just yeah. with time. You get to know what I mean. Mm. Good profession. I'm doing Hollywood too. Good job. Good job. Because I'm tired of the criticism. When you guys will never come up. When you guys will never do this. When I shot 7 to 12 a long time ago, moving just was not this huge. And if you know 7 to 12, the movie where you can stop that. I shot in three, four different states, every different profession. And okay. if that's what Hollywood is craving for right now, let's go. Uh, very soon my fans are going to be the better for it. They will be proud of, of the maker that they have always loved and appreciated it most. Okay. Thank you so much. I actually, um, I met you um, at the Infamous Deception premiere and it was amazing to see how you actually um, take your time to talk to your fans and you're, it's like you're always there for your fans and I really, really admire that. So I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. Whatever we do is for our fans. Without our fans, we can't do what we have to do. I don't belong to the mindset that I believe the fan is the boss. Except when the fan becomes nasty, then I show how, how nasty I compete to. Maybe I, I distribute attitude by myself. I have it in case the fan wants to show. But if the fan is just a true and just the fan is just like to give it to it up to them, they make you what you are. They make you, you know, they are the ones that keep you where you are. And you have to respect the fans. I think as much as they respect you. Okay. Thank you so much for um, giving me the honor of being on Nigeria Radio 234 tonight. 